brought this country the political independence in 1963. But thereafter, a new colonial system was imposed in this country that brought a terrible totalitarian dictatorship upon the people of Kenya. This is what actually inspired the people to rise up and demand freedom. And those who dared in those days suffer the consequences. Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, the son of the first Vice President of Kenya, Oginga Odinga, was born on 7th January 1945 in Maseno. He is also known for nicknames like Tinga, Baba, Aguambo and also People's President. Raila is also known for his political reforms that have led to change in Kenya. Aguambo, Aguambo meaning a mysterious person. The way things happen. Raila can change anytime and you meet him. He's somebody who's dedicated. He's like a spiritual leader. And anytime something happens, he makes decisions for himself. Like even when he was being handed for another detention, he was to be arrested. He became a Legio Maria bishop and he used the, the, the clergy's uh, at, uh, attire to cross over to Uganda. And this one saved his life. Raila has been changing like that. They attacked me in front of my house. And uh, I was admitted at the Nairobi Hospital following that attack. Then thereafter, uh, I got an information that they were looking for me um, and they may harm me, as I narrated that story. So I took off. I was evacuated from here by the, through the grace of the Catholic Church. One father, Father Marco Pio, and a Catholic nun, Sister Diane, from the United States. They took me on that journey. Early in the morning, they were, they were, the father was wearing a collar, the sister was wearing white, and myself was being carried also with a collar. And my name was Father Augustine from Machakos. That's how the name had been given. We passed through all these roadblocks from Nairobi all the way to Kisumu. Where we arrived and I was taken to the Catholic mission up on the hill. Again, introduced there as Father Augustine. After a meal in the evening, I was transferred to another mission called Rangala Mission in Uganda. From there, I was taken home and kept in a house where nobody knew I was present. He suffered arrest and detention for his political moves during Moi's regime. I've been taken to Shimulatewa, to Manyani, to Naivasha. There's no detention camp I've not been to apart from uh, Hola. His struggle against one-party dictatorship saw him detained twice from 1982 to 1988 and 1989 to 1991. And he holds the record for being Kenyan's longest serving detainee. Many people don't know something called the Nyayo House. They talk about Nyayo House, they think maybe it is the current Nyayo House which you see up there. In Nyayo House, down there in the basement, there are cellars, there are cells, torture chambers. When you go in there, the rooms which are painted different. There's a room which is completely black, all the walls are black. Another room where all the walls are red. Another one where the, all the walls are white. Now it depends on your category. 
if you are somebody who is meant to be tortured seriously, you are taken to the room where all the walls are black. But by the time you have been arrested and you are chained, then they tie your eyes, they put you in the back of a Land Rover, they drive you around the town. When they come, come around about, they go around, around about five times so that you get disoriented. Then you end up there in the, in the, in the cells there and there. Then when they, they put you in the cells, there's water tap. It is open. And then the water will drop into the, the floor. They fill it with water. And then you see, I've been sitting in the water. That's when you know how long the night is. The night can be very long. And in the morning, they will take you again. They handcuff you. They tie your eyes. They will take you into a lift up to the third floor. And then there you find yourself on top of the basement of the Nyaya house. Then now, they will tell you that you must now confess. If you don't confess, they are going to throw you from that height down to the ground. So you actually, sometimes you, you are basically forced to have to make false confession. But it's not just a threat. People who were thrown from the 23rd floor of Nyaya House and they fell down on the ground and died. That happened. He was initially imprisoned for trying to stage a coup in 1982, which propelled him on to the national stage. Raila suffered, be it in prison, be it in detention, be it wherever he goes. He's been successful because of his courage. More so, even if there is a danger, he will not run away. But mostly, he has been the longest detainee we have had in Kenya. He has been a detainee without trial. He has been a detainee with a lot of happiness while he's inside, because that is the only way he actually relieved the Kenyans. Raela has suffered all through his life. In fact, Raela has not, did not even bury his mom. And even all the messages could not be After his release, he was arrested again in 1988 for his pro-democracy and human rights agitation, a time when the country continued to descend deep into the thrones of single party rule. Then I came to Riara and we agreed that we are going to organize the Kamkunji meeting together. Sir Ken had a connection with my tattoos. So you use my tattoo to mobilize people. And I would use my soccer connection to bring the Goma here fans <laughs> to fill the Kamukunji grounds. So he said we are going to go because the statement was we were going to ask Kenyans if they are ready for multipartism. Then said, our lawyers, I have not seen Paul Mitter here. And uh, Gibson Kamo Korea. Kiraitu is here, he says, I think Kiraitu probably has represented them. And John Hamino. Within no time, these people came. The Ascaris was stationed in front of uh, uh, Matiba's office in College House. They were in my office. I found so many Ascaris there. In Rubia's office. When I came out of the lift, I found them there. I went into the office. The police me and said, no, I want you to know we are not here to harm you. We are only here to prevent Matiba and Rubia from coming to see you. Apart from that, Paul Mite and Kamau Korea should not come into this office. You also should not go to the offices because there are also Ascaris there in those offices. So I said, but how can I not see Kamau Korea? Understand Matiba? Kamau Korea is, a, is the, the lawyer of this company, and I'm the managing director. 
How can you stop me from seeing my managing director? In the end, they said, I can go. I went to Kamau Kura's office with Kraitu, so many police officers. Two days later, Matiba was picked up and Rubia, Amanda, I'm a short one. Another two days, walikuja kwangu. Okay, I'm going to take a dog or two. I say, man, to kuja badai. No, to take a way a rack as a saivi. To Leander. So we were taken. Of course, I was very familiar with the environment. Odinga was released in 1989, only to be arrested again less than a month later. His third detention would last nearly a year, and when it was over... When I arrived in Norway, I was adopted there. Eventually, I was given an office um, by NORAD. Uh, and uh, I opened up now Ford External Office. But by that time, we had started Ford. And the leaders here could not speak internationally. So I'm the one who used to talk on behalf of the Ford movement outside there. Explain our story as Kenya, the kind of struggle we engaged in in this country, the kind of international sport and support that we required. Uh, so whenever they were doing some interviews, they would get the then U.S. ambassador to Kenya, Mr. Hemstone here. They would get the Minister for uh, Foreign Affairs here. And myself from Oslo, Norway, talking uh, to BBC or to the VOA, uh, on the issues in Kenya. And when eventually our Kamukunji rally, which was the reason why I was being hunted, and the day that we were supposed to take place, you will have seen those photographs of our people on the behind of the, the tracks, Shikuku, Orengo, and so on. Again, I am the one who drew the international attention to what was happening there and confirmed the stories that were going on there. So through there, we were able to mobilize a lot of support for our struggle here in the country, struggle for, for change. And as you know, that rally is what eventually moved Khan to repeal uh, uh, Section 2A of Article 2A of our Constitution and allow for formation of political parties. So all those people took risks. Everybody took a risk in this country. It was not something that came easily. In 1992, Moi had to agree under international pressure to restore multi-party democracy and to a new election. Raila returned to Kenya and joined a Forum for Restoration of Democracy, Ford, founded by his father Oginga Odinga. When he came to Ford, Kenya, to Ford, during the split of Ford into Ford Asili and Ford, Kenya, he joined the Ford Kenya, and at that time there was already a, a challenge to his father because of the age. He decided to move together with him wherever he was, as he was learning from him, as he was also spearheading the change. Then. He left also even the Ford Kenya because... Raila was a key player in 2010 referendum that led to introduction of Majimboism in Kenya. If a governor says I'm going to work with the national government, does not mean that governor is defecting to Jubilee, to, 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 to Uda or to Kenya Kwisha. The governor had to work with the national government. Kwanini, katiba imepatia serikali ya juu jukumu ya kutoza usuru na kuchanga pesa ambayo inaenda kwenye hazina 
ya serikali pesa kisangie ndani ya hazina hiyo kuna taratibu ya kutoa hiyo pesa 